your seat because you're talking away from yourself. Good. <clears throat> uh, is this working? Yes. Thank you. I, I'm Koji Hashimoto from Osaka. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, deep learning and data safety correspondence. First, I'd like to thank all the organizers for a kind invitation. Um, so uh, last year, I organized a conference in uh, Kyoto. And some of you uh, came to Kyoto. Thank you very much. And uh, I, I listened to all the talks, and it uh, has a diverse application of it, ma machine learning to physics. And I, uh, I, I, in, the, in the conference, I uh, concentrated on this question. Is space-time a neural network? So people have uh, uh, constructed many kinds of uh, neural networks for many purposes. Uh, but uh, we are interested in geometry. And geometry, uh, the typical geometry is a space-time. And space-time is defined as a geometry, which has a, a, a special, perp, a f special features. Like, uh, uh, for example, it should be, uh, uh, so it should uh, have a locality, and so so it should be a manifold. Uh, uh, a manifold consists of points where you can uh, define tangent spaces, and also you can uh, define also parallel transport. So those kind of things are. Uh, uh, actually uh, required for uh, regarding uh, any discretized network to be a, a kind of geometry or space-time. And my question is whether, uh, uh, so in what kind of a situation a neural network can be regarded as a space-time? So, uh, uh, so my talk consists of uh, uh, answering this kind of question uh, in the following way. So first, I'd, I'd like to give a, you a brief review of uh, when a space uh, can be thought of as a, a, a neural network, and also time as a neural network. So if you combine these two, then uh, uh, naturally we have a space-time as a neural network. However, uh, in space-time, of course, we uh, often impose a, a Lorentz symmetry. But the neural network is a discrete kind of network. So uh, once you discretize space-time, then of course you lose uh, this Lorentz symmetry. So we don't uh, actually uh, uh, question whether this uh, neural network has a uh, Lorentz space-time, Lorentz symmetry, but uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples where uh, space and time is regarded as a neural network. And then uh, I come to the question of ADS-CFT, uh, when holography is considered as a neural network. And in fact, the important part of holography is whether an emergent space of this radial direction of ADS can be, uh, 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 how, how that direction can emerge uh, from the data of the boundary quantum field theory. So uh, here in section four, I'd like to give my uh, contribution to this uh, field of how holographic space uh, can be regarded as a neural, net neural network and how the space of uh, uh, radial direction of ADS can be emergent from the data analysis of boundary quantum field theory. But of course, our final goal is to construct space-time rather than space. So uh, I'll give you uh, 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 one example of holographic uh, uh, QCD model in which uh, space-time is emergent uh, from the boundary data of a hadronic spectrum of QCD. And then finally, I come to the uh, question part, whether the quantum space-time is a neural network. Of course. We know that space-time is the basis of quantum gravity, where uh, in quantum gravity we need to make some summation over possible different space-times, and that is uh, quantum space-time. So in this uh, uh, framework of regarding neural network as a space-time, whether uh, we can argue or uh, quantum space-time in, in the framework of neural network or not is still a vague question, but uh, I'd like to give some uh, discussion here. So please stop me anytime if you have any question. OK, so let me go uh, start with this uh, space as a neural network. So first, as I said, uh, space-time has uh, several properties. 
So if you come up with uh, any uh, written uh, known architecture of a neural network, they don't look like uh, space-time. So for example, this one is uh, the, the typical uh, deep learning uh, feed-forward neural network model, which is called perceptron model. So these are units, and uh, these are vectors input, and then it's mapped to the another vector here and another vector with this function, the linear plus activation function, linear plus activation function. So this is a typical uh, feed-forward neural network. And as you see from this uh, picture, if you want to regard these uh, units as a space-time points, uh, it's impossible to regard these as a this set as a space-time, since uh, all, so, this, uh, so, so in the usual uh, neural network, uh, it has uh, all-to-all -all connection like this. So whether uh, you, you, you want to see this point is closer to this one or that one or that one, it's hidden in the uh, structure of these uh, weights in the neural network, so you may uh, not uh, see whether this is a space-time or not, right? So because this is all-to-all -all connection, so there is no notion of locality here. It's also the case for this uh, typical uh, neural network, which is called Boltzmann machine, where uh, probability distribution of this input vector is trained, uh, and the uh, training uh, nonlinear function is written here. It's an exponentiation of a uh, uh, spin spin interaction Hamiltonian. And W is the weight, which uh, is represented by these lines. And X is an uh, input vector here. H is a hidden unit here. And they are all to all, all connected. So there is no actually uh, locality, a notion of locality here. So uh, once you want to actually in, uh, regard this neural network as a space-time, then uh, you have to uh, put some constraints on the set of these weights. And after you uh, put some uh, constraints, then you can actually uh, find a space-time-like neural network. So how can we do that? So the basic uh, uh, requirement is to introduce a proper sparsity for the neural network. So as I said, the fully connected neural network has no locality among these units points. But uh, once you include, uh, once you uh, put some constraints on these uh, weights, those are lines, then uh, you can uh, have uh, some locality. So for example, the popular uh, uh, neural network has this uh, convolutional layer, uh, this one. So what is convolutional layer? So as I uh, uh, wrote, uh, draw here. So uh, this unit is connected to that point. This connect, uh, unit is connected to that unit with the same weight. So these uh, set of weights are actually uh, uh, derived by imposing just, uh, having just uh, these three uh, weights uh, which are parallelly translated to make this equivalent to this one and this one. So this is a convolutional layer which was invented by Fukushima, who was a professor in my Osaka University in 1980. And uh, in any image recognition of neural network, this convolutional layer was uh, implemented. The reason is quite simple. If you have images, those are a bunch of data. And then, uh, so uh, if you uh, pick up points in the image, then that should be uh, so notionally related to the other points uh, locally, only locally. So if you put some perturbation to uh, this uh, data, then of course the resultant image, the recognition shouldn't change. So this, is, uh, this needs to be robust against the perturbation of the data. And convolutional layer was introduced such that uh, it is uh, actually against uh, those perturbations. And it works very well. And now, uh, so uh, thinking about the geometry, uh, so usually we have, when we have space time, then we consider quantum field theory on it. And quantum field theory is given by a Lagrangian. And Lagrangian is usually uh, local. Right? local. Local means that you have quantum field on the space time. And the Lagrangian is written in terms of just uh, several numbers of uh, uh, derivatives acting on the quantum fields. So in fact, uh, uh, if you look at this convolutional layer, then you can regard uh, this as a differential operator. The reason is as follows. So suppose uh, these are different space points and then fields are on these uh, points. So the inputs, uh, input vector is the uh, quantum field. Then uh, you want to act the derivative, space derivative on the quantum field. So what you uh, need to do is 
the transformation of this uh, quantum field to its derivative here. And the derivative is nothing but the difference between two uh, spatial uh, uh, next to each, each other points. Right? So if you consider uh, these weights are just uh, multiplying plus one, and this one as multiplying minus one, and uh, this unit is an addition of this one and that one, then uh, it gives you a difference between this point and that point, the field value. So it is a derivative. Right? So the convolutional layer uh, intrinsically includes the operation of uh, differentiation. So here, uh, if you discretize x direction like uh, delta x as a, uh, a separation between the points, and then n is the integer, then this is the input of uh, quantum field theory value. Then the output is, uh, 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 is uh, ex uh, expanded in terms of derivative like this. So if you include uh, this kind of filter, so three points got, got together to uh, one unit, then it has this uh, second derivative. So if you have four uh, lines, then you have a third derivative. So in this way, the fully connected uh, neural network can be thought of as uh, uh, the differentiation operators acting uh, uh, multi multiple times. And if you have the fully connected uh, neural network, then it uh, goes up to the infinite derivatives. So usually, we uh, don't think about uh, these uh, higher derivatives. And quantum field theory, which are renormalizable, uh, should stop at uh, almost here. Right? So this means that uh, uh, for a fully connected neural network to be regarded as a, a space-time, then we, have, we, don't, we, we just need to give up fully connected neural network and consider just a convolutional layer or some, uh, uh, put some constraint on the set of uh, weights. So this is a simple discussion of how, uh, when a neural network uh, can be uh, a space. So the message is uh, we need uh, sparsity for the neural network, the proper uh, sparsity. So next, uh, let me discuss uh, when time is a neural network. Uh, a very famous uh, neural network, which is called ResNet, uh, is as follows. So, so, uh, so, so this is new architecture of, of ResNet. So for example, ResNet is used for uh, AlphaGo 0, uh, which has more than 100 layers. So when you have a deep, deep neural network, then the training is very difficult. But uh, they introduced this uh, ResNet for the architecture of uh, AlphaGo 0 and uh, succeeded in uh, training the, the AlphaGo 0. So how it goes? Uh, this is the input, and uh, this is the way, uh, multiplication weight, and also the activation function to get uh, the, uh, another layer. Uh, but in addition to the standard neural network, feed-forward neural network, you, uh, you add uh, this uh, highway network, so-called highway network. So this highway network is just uh, uh, this one. So uh, original neural network plus uh, this input itself. So this is highway because uh, this uh, goes directly to that. And you have the addition of that. And uh, now it's called uh, often uh, called a, a skip connection. So because of this one, uh, nobody knows why, but uh, it uh, uh, makes the training possible the deep, deep uh, neural network possible. And the physical reason, what I, uh, which I think, uh, the reason for uh, this successful training is the equivalence to discretized dynamical system. So once you have this uh, part, then actually uh, this equation itself can be regarded as a discretized time evolution of the system. So suppose we have uh, this dynamical uh, deterministic uh, equation, where time derivative of this uh, xi vector is given by a function of this. Then uh, when you discretize uh, this time uh, with the uh, space of delta t, then uh, this one is discretized to that. And in fact, uh, this part actually uh, coincides with this skip connection. Right? So in this way, uh, we can physically understand why this works uh, make, makes sense. So since uh, the information here is transmitted to information there uh, properly with this uh, dynamical uh, deterministic equation. So it makes uh, po possibly uh, the uh, uh, training successful. But uh, uh, the other way of saying this is that uh, once uh, you want to regard uh, this, this neural network as a time evolution, then uh, adding this one uh, makes, it, uh, makes it possible. 
So uh, if you have uh, this uh, time evolution system, then if you want to uh, make it as a neural network, then just discretizing and then uh, introducing a skip connection makes it. Possible. Yes, please. I mean, there is an understanding of why this is good for training, which is that uh, mm. you want the uh, derivative at each layer with respect to uh, the inputs to be a matrix uh, near one. So there's these problems of vanishing and exploding gradients if it gets too big oh, or too small. And this makes it easy to be near one. Oh, I see, I see. One term. So uh, that reason is actually different from what I. They're, 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 they're related. I mean, a continuous evolution. Yeah, yeah. Saying yeah. That the infinitesimal derivative is, uh, goes to zero as epsilon goes to zero. I see. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, so I guess. Uh, uh, hmm. So it means that. Uh, so if I replace this x by x squared or something, then even with that case, uh, it's possible to train this model, right? Then you wouldn't have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I see, I see. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. So from that perspective, maybe. Uh, uh, so the fact that uh, this could be regarded as a time evolution is a special case of uh, the. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a natural thing. People have observed there's this neural ODE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, so uh, uh, the physical system which uh, includes uh, time evolution is uh, this, the Hamiltonian uh, dynamics. And uh, for example, if I uh, want to realize this Hamiltonian uh, uh, equation uh, as a neural network, then how uh, can, I, can, can I do that? Uh, the trial neural network representation uh, looks like this. Since we, we have Q and P as uh, two inputs, so, uh, so we can consider two uh, input vector. And this is the, the one layer of neural network, the multiplication of uh, a linear uh, matrix and then activation function. But uh, actually, this doesn't work. So even though we, uh, I can use the uh, uh, arbitrariness of this activation function, and uh, if I want to resolve that to the Hamiltonian, the, the arbitrariness of Hamiltonian, then I hope that uh, this uh, neural network can actually represent uh, this Hamilton dynamics, but uh, it's not. The simple way of uh, uh, calculation is as follows. So uh, this neural network, uh, is written so so the the, the architecture is uh, uh, giving this these equations phi one and phi two activation functions and q and p are input vectors and uh, it gives you uh, q and p at t plus delta t right and then uh, since this activation function is a completely nonlinear function but uh, delta t goes to zero gives a consistency that uh, it uh, the left hand side and right hand side should coincide. So uh, this means that phi th these activation functions and also the weight matrix W needs to uh, have this uh, expansion form. So W actually needs to be one a unit matrix plus delta T, and phi is, uh, need to be a linear function plus some nonlinearity. And then uh, you, uh, you take delta T goes to zero, then you get uh, these equations. But unfortunately, this equation differs from this, these equations. The difference is that, yes, uh, G1 and G2, actually, they are included in activation functions, and these are uh, arbitrary functions. But uh, these, uh, doesn't, uh, these are not related to Hamiltonians. So if you want to regard this as a Hamilton equation, then, uh, in, in fact, uh, only uh, linear G1 and linear G2 are allowed uh, to satisfy the simplest, uh, symplectic structure of uh, Hamilton equations. So you need some more trick. And indeed, uh, there exists some trick. Uh, if you uh, increase the, the number of units for each layer, uh, like uh, introducing some dummies, and then uh, swap these things uh, <coughs> in an appropriate way, then in fact, uh, you can construct a Hamilton equation by uh, this uh, neural network by choosing a sparse uh, uh, weights distribution and also a proper definition of activation function. Uh, like this Hamiltonian. Th this Hamiltonian has a quadratic part plus arbitrary uh, uh, nonlinear uh, function part of P and Q. So for example, this Hamiltonian includes uh, the standard uh, 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 non-relativistic Hamiltonian for a particle. And of course, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, make more pairs of uh, P and Q so that it has uh, dynamics in uh, higher dimensions. 
And also, uh, you can have a more involved uh, structure of these uh, inclusion of dummies so that uh, it has uh, more uh, complicated terms, which includes also P and Q at the same time. Yes, please. Was there, is there any similarity to the uh, structure of invertible neural networks? Structure of what? Uh, invertible neural networks? Um, at this stage, no. I don't see. Structure well, yeah. Uh, to invertible neural networks? Yeah. So, uh, so one, so uh, one comment is that this is uh, uh, also invertible. Yes, but the Hamilton equation is invertible, so this is invertible neural network. However, uh, the uh, introduction of these dummies doesn't look. Uh, do Do you see? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, so so at least I can say that this is of course invertible, but uh, yeah, I don't see the. Similar to the, to the original invertible neural networks. Okay, and then uh, uh, other uh, example includes uh, this uh, uh, condensed matter application of uh, uh, deep multiple machine to the new uh, to the uh, identification of ground state wave function. So there are many people who uh, try to find the ground state wave function by using machine learning. And one way is to use a uh, Boltzmann machine, where in Boltzmann machine, a uh, uh, probabilistic distribution of this input vector is mimicked uh, by this exponentiation of some uh, so-called uh, energy function of uh, Boltzmann machine. And if you regard this uh, probability as a wave function itself, for example, the real part of the wave function itself, then uh, you can use this uh, deep Boltzmann machine wave function as an answer for finding a ground state of uh, condensed matter physics for given Hamiltonian. And this uh, uh, procedure, uh, yes, of course, it's just an answer. However, it has a physical meaning. The physical meaning is as follows. The ground state wave function for a given Hamiltonian can be identified as a deep Boltzmann machine itself. The reason is as follows. So this is the structure of deep Boltzmann machine. So normally we have all to all connections. However, uh, as I said, if you want to regard this part as a space time, this is space, this is time, then you just, uh, you need to uh, have some sparse structure of space time. And then suppose that uh, this spin interacts only with these things like this. Then, uh, in fact, uh, you can regard this part as a Hamiltonian itself. The reason is as follows. The ground state Hamiltonian is written like this. It's the limit of uh, tau goes to infinity of exponentiation of Euclidean time stamp Hamiltonian, right? So uh, e even if you start with any wave function, if you multiply this operator, then it goes to ground state. And uh, if you discretize this Euclidean time, then it uh, looks like this. And uh, this one uh, can be identified with uh, this part. So uh, this weight, uh, which connects the visible layer input and the hidden layer input, uh, connected by this weight, can be regarded by, as the original Hamiltonian uh, of your system. And what's the role of this weight of the hidden variable in front and looks straight by it? This one, yeah. 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 Uh, yes. So, uh, so it, the, uh, this form is written as an uh, operator uh, uh, operator representation. However, uh, this one is written as a path integral uh, representation, where h, this is a summation h for spin, spin up or down, uh, for this hidden and hidden and hidden is a path integration of all uh, possible spins here. You know that uh, uh, here. So, so uh, this psi. So suppose this is uh, tau uh, minus infinite, so infinitely past uh, state. And then uh, you uh, pass integrate all possible hidden uh, layer spins to get the t equal to zero state, right? So. Um, no. The reason is that uh, uh, so the bottom machine was invented to uh, produce some uh, possible uh, probability distribution. But you can just regard this uh, function as a wave function itself. 
And uh, the difficulty is that this wave function is uh, complex normally. So uh, you can change, uh, you can regard this, uh, so you, you can make this uh, weight as a complex number. That's one way. The other way is to, to think about two independent deep neural networks. A uh, real part is given by one, the uh, imagined part is given by the other one. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. In, in some special cases, a uh, real wave function is uh, expected. And in that case, yeah. You just uh, regard this probability distribution as a wave function. So uh, the, uh, why I uh, uh, came with uh, this uh, example is that the here, uh, the naturally, uh, this uh, deep layer direction is regarded as a Euclidean time. And uh, uh, the situation when we can regard uh, this uh, uh, neural network as a space time is very limited. So uh, this Hamiltonian is, of course, local Hamiltonian. So they are related, they are connecting only the nearby uh, spins. So only when you have such a structure, then you can regard this neural network as a space time. Good. So let me uh, go on to the holography part. And in fact, uh, this ADS CFT is, uh, can be easily regarded as a deep Boltzmann machine. The ADS CFT correspondence, the uh, famous GKP Witten relation, uh, means that the QFT uh, partition function with the source uh, J on a particular uh, composite operator is regarded as a quantum field path integral in the gravity side. Uh, with the condition that uh, this uh, closed string field phi has a boundary value j, uh, which is identified with the source of quantum field theory. So this is GKP within relation. The point is that, that this uh, z of j is living in the boundary, but uh, this path integral, including the gravity, is in a higher dimensional part. And uh, there is a similar, so, so you can immediately see the similarity between this one and the deep Boltzmann machine, which I mentioned. The deep Boltzmann machine has a path integration over uh, all possible configuration in, uh, of units in, inside. And the visible layer has some configuration, and that has a probab that's, that's giving a probability distribution to be trained. And if you regard this uh, probability uh, distribution as a partition function, with J identified with this V, then uh, in fact uh, this V, which is J, is given a boundary condition for this uh, quantum field living in the bulk. And on the other hand, in the deep bottom machine, this V is just the boundary value of these uh, spins. So they are the same. And you can make uh, this correspondence more uh, concretely. So uh, this is just an illustration, so you don't uh, need to look at the equations. So suppose you have a scalar field theory in the curve. Yes, curve sp yes please. In the initial ADS CFT, um, they associate J to say something in the uh, Jan Mills theory yep. or something. But here, I mean, here I see, of course, as, as you say, it's the connection of what boundary conditions you've got just in gravity. Mm -hmm. But what, what's the dual theory? in terms of the deep Boltzmann The usual ADS-CFT has got a gravitational theory in And here, I've yeah. got the Boltzmann machine calculating on one side the equivalent of gravity, but what's the deep um, So I, I was thinking about uh, the opposite. The, the, uh, so deep Boltzmann machine is to, uh, to find a proper distribution of weights which can mimic the given probability distribution. Right? So this is given. Then you want to find uh, the energy function. Right? So uh, in, in ADS-CFT, uh, if you have Yamel's theory, then uh, using lattice QCD or something, you can actually compute this thing. Right? And to mimic uh, this probability distribution, you need to find some bug gravity metric. So this is given, and this is generated. So you're saying it can be anything at all, and then I just train the weights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, in the uh, uh, later examples, I give uh, this one, and then I train this model to find the gravity metric. Yeah. Thank you for the question. But do 
do we imagine that ABS CO2 works that way to get like a you know, type of holographic fuel source? Any damages to Well, if you uh, loosen the condition about the, for example, the locality of this bulk, then you can always find any. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but the, the question is whether we can find a proper uh, local Lagrangian for this one, right? If you allow arbitrary uh, so higher derivative uh, thing, mm. then uh, you can actually come up with a very arbitrary yeah, function of which can mimic to mm -hmm. any detail of this. So uh, the procedure to get, uh, so, so to make uh, this uh, dictionary between these two. Yes, please. Uh, presented this uh, from the point of view of space and time before. And you were saying that basically the depth of this uh, neural network was associated with time evolution. Mm. But now you are essentially trying to bring it to the space, to another, an emergent direction. But then there is a problem here, because you have space, time, and emergent direction. I mean, in holography, you have the three of them. You have space, time, right. and Z in this emergent direction. That you are right, yes. So I uh, secretly swap the direction of uh, space and time. So here, uh, as you said, uh, this direction is uh, uh, emergent, emergent space. space. It's not time. Uh, the, uh, the thing which were used here previously and also here so all the details, are, so yeah, it doesn't uh, actually uh, uh, care whether uh, this derivative is time or space, right? So even, so even though you think about just a space evolution, you can use uh, the same uh, framework. So I secretly swap uh, the direction of space and time here. And in this uh, regard of ADS-CFT, this direction is, of course, uh, space. So uh, the evolution along this uh, direction is spatial evolution. Yes, you're right. And the time, time direction is this direction, sure. So I skipped the details, but uh, uh, the proper discretization actually makes uh, uh, scalar field theory in curved space-time to uh, deep Boltzmann. And you can construct uh, uh, explicit uh, uh, dictionary between those. For example, uh, this uh, bulk field phi correspond to hidden variables h in this deep Boltzmann machine, as I said. So I guess I was right in saying, as yes. I said, right, it's, a, it's just about the representation here, right? A representation of a function. If you have enough hidden, hidden, hidden variables, you can write, you can come up with, with, with a function like that. That's why deep Boltzmann machine works. On the left hand side, you have ADS CFT, and you want something physical. So I guess the question here is what the distribution, the, the, the boundary distribution in your language have to be such that the bulk actually looks like physical theory. Sure, sure. A reasonable amount of hidden variables with locality and all that. Exactly, yes, exactly. So, uh, so uh, for example, if I don't, uh, uh, so if I allow O to O connection, then I, I cannot expect that. Uh, yeah, you're right. right. Yes. So, uh, so the reason why uh, data scientists uh, came up with uh, various kinds of uh, neural network architecture is that uh, to, so they want to simplify the model, and they want to have uh, uh, less number of uh, kinds of weights, and so that uh, the training can be possible. So here, the motivation from my side is different. So I, I want to have a physical model, right, as you said. So I, I need the uh, least number of fields, for example, and sparse neural networks. And, uh, but so, uh, so uh, another motivation is that the ADA safety works for, for example, higher supersymmetric theories. But we don't know whether QCD has a gravity dual or not. Right? QCD is very close to YAMLs, uh, supersymmetric YAMLs. And uh, any core for super MS has a gravity dual, but QCD we don't know whether it has a gravity dual or not. So for those uh, similar theories, uh, we can deform this side by uh, a little bit uh, of uh, loosening the constraint of the deep Boltzmann machine. And uh, I'm uh, going to tell you whether we can find a nice gravity dual or not for the QCD. OK, so uh, I use uh, the remaining time. So how, how many minutes do I have? 12 minutes, thanks. 
So uh, I'll give you two examples. Uh, one, uh, one example is holographic space as a neural network. So uh, here I use the simplest uh, holographic model, uh, which goes like this. So normally in a holographic model of, uh, say, QCD, uh, you start with uh, some gravity model, and then use the ADS CFT dictionary to compute QCD observables, and then compare them with uh, experimental data. Right? So that's how uh, gravity holographic, holographic modeling of QCD is worked out. And among uh, all of uh, many, many holographic QCD models, uh, this is the simplest one. So the action is the uh, uh, five-dimensional scalar field theory in the uh, uh, background gravity metric. Okay? So eta is the uh, uh, ADS uh, radial direction. And uh, this uh, metric, if it is a pure ADS, then it corresponds to conformal field theory in the boundary. But if the boundary theory is not conformal, then the metric is not pure ADS. Okay? And at the finite temperature, you can introduce black hole horizon inside of this uh, bulk gravity. And where, uh, so, I, so, so this eta is the radial direction of this ADS. So black hole horizon is at eta equals to zero, where the black hole horizon means that f goes like eta squared, and g goes to non-zero positive constant. At eta is infinite, uh, this is nearly conformal at the high energy. So f and g goes like exponential function of eta. And this capital L is the ADS radius. And once this uh, gravity model is given, then you can compute, for example, the uh, response function of uh, one point uh, expectation value of one, uh, one point function, uh, operator O, as a function of its source, j. So for example, the uh, uh, popular example of QCD data is uh, chiral condensate as a function of quark mass. So quark mass is a source for this chiral uh, condensate operator. And how you get uh, this chiral condensate as a quark mass is as follows. So first, you solve this uh, scalar field phi equation of motion. And you have two modes, since this is a second order differential, ordinary differential equation. Near the ADS boundary, you can solve because the ADS boundary uh, is uh, uh, pure ADS. And there are two solutions. And two coefficients for uh, each mode uh, correspond to uh, this quark mass and chiral condensate. And, and on the other hand, at black hole horizon, uh, this scalar field should satisfy ingoing boundary condition. So uh, uh, if you put uh, this ingoing boundary condition, then this uh, quark mass and chiral condensates are related with each other, giving this uh, response function. Okay. So this is the recipe of uh, uh, ADS-CFT correspondence. So the point is that once gravity model is given, then you can compute this, uh, this thing. And I want to do the opposite. Uh, so QCD lattice simulation gives you this. And then can you actually uh, find a proper metric which reproduces this thing? That's the question. So for this purpose, uh, this equation of motion for phi can, uh, is uh, cast into the form of neural network. And the neural network has a spatial part. And this spatial part has a, a metric dependence. And this metric dependence can be fixed by the training. So that's how it goes. The equation motion of, of the scalar field looks like this. So for example, if I come up, uh, if I uh, prepare uh, phi 4 theory for this uh, potential part, then this is phi to the cube. And the metric function h uh, appears here, uh, the coefficient of uh, round eta phi. And metric function h is defined <coughs> like this, this f and g, uh, the component, temporal component and spatial component of this uh, bulk metric. And now, as I advertised, uh, we can discretize this equation of motion, uh, like eta plus delta eta as a function of uh, evolution of uh, eta part, and then make it a uh, Hamilton form. And then uh, this equation can be cast into this form. And uh, this has a neural network representation. 
Now the metric appears here h of error, and h of error uh, it depends on error, but it is a coefficient of a mapping from pi of error to pi of error plus delta eta. So these green lines correspond to uh, this metric. So uh, once uh, we can train this neural network such that uh, the relation between phi and pi satisfies uh, this uh, given data set, then uh, we can get a uh, trained model and uh, the weights the, of the sparse neural network uh, gives you a metric, so we can inversely solve uh, this holographic QCD model. Um, yeah, the training data is in fact uh, this this thing, uh, chiral <coughs> condensate as a function of coarseness. So once you have, so uh, suppose you give uh, coarseness, then lattice QCD can calculate this one, right? So this gives you a set of uh, these two numbers. So you put uh, these two numbers here, then it uh, fixes the boundary condition at eta is infinite. So you put uh, this input, many sets of uh, two numbers here. And then suppose that it satisfies the black hole boundary condition here. Right? So uh, this is supervised training to uh, fix the weights. And this is uh, how the training goes. So anyway, uh, after the training, so this is quark mass versus chiral condensate, and red one is the uh, lattice QCD data. And uh, finally, uh, this uh, function of H is uh, trained like uh, to having this form. And also, uh, it is radius, and also the 5-4 coupling can be trained in the same way. And the gravity model is inversely solved. And the training metric looks like this. So this is ADS radial direction, and the volume factor looks like this. If this were a, a ADS Schwarzschild uh, metric, then it straightly goes down to zero. But uh, unfortunately, it's different from ADS Schwarzschild. And there is a bump uh, here. So this means that uh, this uh, metric function is not a solution of Einstein equation. And uh, there is something uh, which causes this bump. And interestingly, uh, when I gave a talk at uh, Munich, uh, Sven invited me to Munich. And then uh, one of the audience, uh, Oleg Andreev, said that I saw this metric and I have written this metric in his paper. And I was surprised. I didn't know his paper. And then I looked. So he showed me his paper. And in his paper, this metric was uh, given, uh, phenomenologically given. And then I plotted that. Uh, with the mathematical and it looks like this. So this is not a solution of uh, Einstein equation, but it uh, has a very similar property of this bump. So he came up with this model uh, for uh, fitting uh, uh, the Wilson loop uh, of lattice QCD data. So it's coming from uh, very different observables, but he invented this metric as a phenomenological model of holographic QCD. And uh, our method actually came from chiral condensate, which is different from Wilson loop. But we came, we, we came up with the, the same metric. The train found, the, met, the, the machine found the same metric. So anyway, uh, with this trained metric, we can compute the uh, Q-cube potential. Uh, this is the quark distance, and this is the potential. And they, they look like this. And you can uh, compare this with the lattice QCD data for uh, of uh, Q-cube potential, and they look uh, very similar. So uh, in this way, uh, uh, the neural geometry uh, works uh, quite nicely for uh, QCD data. And uh, so with the remaining uh, a few minutes, I'd like to introduce uh, also the holographic space-time. The other model, which is popular, uh, by, uh, uh, written by Karch, Katzson, and Stefanov in uh, 2006, is this uh, uh, a gauge field model in the bulk. So where you have the metric at zero uh, temperature. So AZ is a metric function, and also Dilaton. So there are two functions. And I'd like to fix these two functions. The data is the uh, vector meson spectrum. So how do you get the uh, spectrum? So solve this equation for the gauge field. And then gauge field is decomposed into the radial part 
and uh, space-time part. And then uh, this uh, radial part uh, has this uh, equation. Okay? And uh, when you talk about spectrum, then spectrum is uh, time dependence, right? However, uh, if you include all the time dependence in neural network, then it's really complicated. But rather than doing that, uh, we introduce a free transform of it, and then introduce this uh, oscillatory uh, uh, frequency, uh, omega squared. And omega squ squared actually appeared only here. Right? So you don't actually need to construct uh, all the time, uh, time uh, so all the series of uh, time series of the neural network. Uh, uh, instead of that, uh, introducing this omega squared uh, simply actually fixes the problem. So this time direction, if you think about that, that as a uh, os, os, uh, w uh, frequency, then uh, this is just it. So you solve uh, this equation. And uh, when uh, this omega squared has a proper discrete value mn squared, then this gauge field is normalizable, so you can excite it. Right? So in this way, uh, uh, the, the uh, vector meson mass can be derived from this model. So in the same manner, uh, this uh, equation of motion can be discretized uh, to get the neural network representation. The difference from the other example is that I have uh, this omega squared, the time direction here too. And using this uh, neural network, uh, for example, I took from PDG data for raw meson mass. The ro lowest raw meson mass is this. The first excited state is this. So this is the mass spectrum. Uh, here is the lowest. This is the excited. And of course, there are many more excited modes, but <coughs> I can just use this. So this is positive, or this is negative. And then uh, I can train this model uh, to get this one. So this is the ADS radio direction. And this is the uh, met so metric function and the Dilaton function. So it's a combina linear combination of that. So uh, using this uh, raw meson mass only fixes uh, a certain linear combination of Dilaton and metric. Yes. So I can work also for uh, A2 meson mass, which has spin 2. And using a similar method, you can uh, actually have uh, this combination and train like this. And use these two to uh, get the metric and Dilaton. They look like this. So the metric result uh, is consistent with pure ADS. And as for Dilaton, so this is a trained uh, Dilaton. And this one is a Z squared, uh, which was written in the original paper uh, <coughs> by Katz, uh, Katz, Katz et al. And you can see that the Dilaton is growing if you go deeper in the infrared of the bulk geometry. So this means that uh, it grows. So Dilaton, the coupling constant of QCD grows at IR, like QCD running coupling constant. Again, the, uh, yes. In the metric you showed for Andre and so on, the Dilaton has the wrong sign. Your sign here is quadratic and positive, it looks like. But in the uh, yellow one, when you train the, the uh, the neural network to get you the uh, dilaton metric inside was negative. It was positive. Just go two slides back. I think. So why is he here? Is positive? It's negative. See? This one. Minus five. Yeah. So phi is z squared, roughly, from what you showed. But in the Andrea Zakharov, it was plus. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. So, uh, so uh, when plotting this one, then this z squared. So uh, this is uh, absolute yeah. value of it. Yes. So this is absolute value of it. And uh, our case is uh, this this yes. growing function. I have an issue. I mean, there, there seems to be a sign issue in the exponent of the dilaton. Um, exponent of minus z squared. Yeah, I think this is the absolute value. So I pro what I brought is absolute value. <coughs> and uh, you're right. Uh, this uh, uh, the original paper has uh, this uh, uh, different yes. sign. Yes. And our our case has a uh, uh, positive sign for the Dilaton phi. So it's growing. Exponent of it's growing. So what do you, what do you say about the original? So, so this is the model which we yeah. trained. It's exponent of minus z squared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Square. Minus p, minus phi, minus, minus z yeah, minus. No, no, no. So the Dilaton has not been fixed in in our model. So 
So we train it. And yeah, we get you yes. found uh, that it was quadratic. That's so this one. This one is growing. The phi is growing. But what okay. we found is. OK, but. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing. Yeah, so positively growing in our case. But uh, their original model is uh, negative minus z squared in our convention. So that, that's what you said, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, finally, I'd like to uh, convey my message. Uh, in ADS-CFT, we often discretize the bulk geometry. And also, uh, but the, the, so, so uh, ADS mirror and quantum codes for holography, these actually discretize the bulk geometry. However, the metric itself doesn't fluctuate. So this is not the quantum gravity. This is a toy model for ADS-CFT. So if you want to work for uh, quantum gravity, then metric needs to fluctuate. And in old days, uh, of course, uh, there are many ways uh, tried, uh, regular calculus and uh, also dynamical triangulation. These two are uh, uh, two ways to uh, uh, find the uh, quant simply shell quantum gravity framework. But these, are, these two are different. The regular calculus is for fixed lattice architecture, but variable lengths. So uh, first, you fix the topology like a sphere. Then uh, you uh, discretize this sphere and change the length uh, of the, uh, these triangles. Then you sum over uh, possible uh, length scales for all simply shells. And uh, this suits our conventional neural network. Since in conventional neural network, we fix the architecture and change the weights. Right? However, in the, uh, the other, on the other hand, the dynamical triangulation you have a randomly generated lattice architecture with fixed length. Right? So these are completely different from uh, this uh, regular calculus. Yes. And uh, for, uh, I don't uh, find a good uh, example of a neural network which can actually, actually generate, generate uh, this architecture with fixed length. So uh, when you talk about quantum gravity and neural network, then the, uh, quantum gravity has these two different frameworks. And this looks like neural network, but this doesn't. So uh, hopefully, uh, we can make a neural network well with this uh, uh, property uh, uh, in, uh, implemented. And uh, may maybe we can compare that with the quantum gravity. OK, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Koji. Other questions? So your, your metric? Did not solve Einstein's equation. Right. But does it solve Einstein's equation with the scalar field stress energy included? Or to include yes. Other? Yes. It does. Yes. Uh, but uh, uh, for scalar field theory, of course, you can uh, come up with the arbitrary potential term for the scalar. So this means that, uh, uh, for example, uh, if you if I want to find uh, gravity plus scalar theory, scalar yes. theory, which has a solution of this form, then I can cook up some uh, special uh, potential term for the scalar field theory, which can actually reproduce this bump. But isn't that you, your neural network gives you the scalar field, doesn't it? Uh, that's the different uh, scalar field. It's uh, that's the different scalar field. Uh, so this scalar field was used to, to for the training, right? And for the training, I, I need to use uh, many, many different uh, scalar field configurations. Right? And that fixes the bulk geometry. Uh, so uh, this scalar field cannot be identical to the scalar field which you mentioned. Right? Since this uh, shouldn't uh, change under the variation of this bulk mass. Right? Or uh, 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 rather than scalar field, a uh, scalar field I can introduce higher derivative term to the Einstein equation. And uh, uh, the coefficient of that can be fixed by this uh, solution. Yeah. So when you have this, uh, these deep lead networks, um, typically these are very hard to, to sample or to try to do this model saying a good sampling. When you impose the Lagrangian or the reaction to be Physical, and you get less 
I mean, you get much more restricted weight and so on. Does mm -hmm. it help with sampling? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, since uh, for this deep bottom machine, as you said, uh, there is a difficulty in training. So uh, one, one thing we, I can say is that rather than restricting the, 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 the weights and the capacity of the weights, uh, we can use a field theory technique for uh, improving the sampling. Like uh, uh, in uh, field theory, we often use large end expansion, right? So rather than actually sampling old things, we can, uh, we can take a large limit of the Boltzmann machine. If we can take it, then we can just use a classical, uh, 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 we can just use a sort of classical configuration of speeds rather than taking all the sampling of, yeah. So uh, this way may help uh, the, the Boltzmann machine to be trained it's from the field theory perspective. I don't understand the answer. Can you start with a classic, classical configuration? No. Uh, so uh, if you have a field theory uh, interpretation of this deep Boltzmann machine, then you have uh, a classical configuration of spins, right, as a solution of equation of motion. And when h bar is very small, uh, you can say that uh, those uh, gives you a good, uh, very good sampling. Right. Quantum, quantum configuration can be dominated by classical configurations. But it's not self-motivated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what was the requirement you had in the quantum gravity neural network? The requirement for the quantum gravity in your network. Um, yeah. So when you talk about the gravity, then uh, uh, first you need to make a summation mm -hmm. over uh, these uh, lengths or architectures, right? So in the standard neural network, we don't do that. So oh. weights are fixed after the training. We don't su make a summation of our weights. Right? And so uh, this is a, so quantum gravity is a very different framework. You, you need to make a summation over possible weights and then averaging over weights with some uh, uh, weights for weights. And then that gives you a, a quantum gravity. And in your network, uh, there is so-called uh, statistical neural networks. And those are very close to uh, these ideas. Yeah. But uh, those are not used for the application of neural networks. Those are used for analysis of how generic neural network behaves. So those kind of things are closer to quantum gravity. Maybe in the interest of time, we thank OG. Thank you very much. Thank you.